This is Joe Everson with Thumbprint Photography with a quick pro editing tip. I'll be doing this tip on my mobile device. I'll be using Lightroom Mobile. If you have a desktop, then you can also do the same process. You'll just want to look for the same tool symbols, and I'll mention them as I go. It's fairly simple. This is really quick. This isn't going to be really long. It'll be less than five minutes easy. I shot this shot of Bethany yesterday with a Godox uh, soft light, uh, a speed light technically a flash <laughs> with a soft box on it. And I went for one light. I just wanted to do something really quick. Uh, got a cool dress that had like an iridescent look to it and thought it would come out really cool in a flash. And um, it did in a lot of the shots. Now here's a shot that I wanted to show as an example. It's not the best shot I got from the night, but it is one that will work perfectly for this. So um, you always have to ask yourself that question as a photographer, you know, what are you exposing for? And typically, for instance, when I'm shooting with film, especially, um, I'll expose for the shadows quite often. And that way I know I gather that information. Here, I kind of missed it a little bit. As you can see, it's quite dark. All the dress information and the other side of the body, the legs, look a little dark and the face looks uh, much more light. Um, and, you know, the clutch is pretty bright. And so it's kind of, it, although it's a decent shot in a lot of ways too, and sure, I'm not afraid of shadows and contrast and mood, um, it didn't do what I'm looking for and thought it would be a great example shot to play with. So typically what I would do in this situation in the past is I would do one of two things kind of combined technically, but I would go into my exposures, uh, exposure level here and maybe try to bring it up a little bit. But as you can tell, as soon as I start bringing it up, the face is already way too bright and uh, I'm kind of overexposing it to even start to get some of that cool information in the dress or the rest of the body. So. Instead of doing that in the past, then I would go down to shadows and bring that up. Now I'll still bring up the shadows a little bit in an edit, obviously, um, and that'd be fine. And I even get this almost HDR-y kind of look, but I don't, I don't really want that uh, necessarily. So what do I do? Well, I found this cool trick here, and maybe some of you already know this, and I've used it before, but I found it very helpful and didn't use it for quite a while. And uh, I'm not saying you should always shoot this way either. Uh, typically what you should probably do is have maybe a reflector uh, at the least uh, behind in, in the back corner over there down in here uh, Possibly reflecting back up against the body to give some outline um, Some rim lighting or at least bring some light into the shadows if you're looking for a really uh, more even exposed evenly exposed shot But since I didn't do that something I'll do that uh, can kind of help lend itself to looking that way a little bit more Is I will take the shot so there's the shadows all the way up and you can press the highlights down But I just don't like it like that. So what you do is you look in the shadow area Bring the exposure up. Don't worry about the rest of the shot at this point. And you're really just looking to expose everything that you do want to see. So in other words, I'm looking at like the dress area right there. And I'm starting to get some information. I'll bring up the shadows a little bit. Even though I'm blowing out the face up there, I'm not worried about that yet. And let's say I'm happy somewhere around there, okay? So now that I've gotten to this stage, I will go over here, go to the Selective Edits tool. If you're on the desktop, you'll see like a paintbrush and a gradient tool and a, oh, I forgot the name of it, it's the little circle, dang it, um, uh, I can't remember, but anyway, on here, when I hit the plus sign, I get all three, and uh, I'll hit the gradient tool, and I'm going to select the top left corner and bring it down, uh, in this case, I feel like maybe to about here, that's it for starters, and then I'll go in and hit my exposure again, and I'll bring it down, so now you can see the color in our face is starting to come down to the color of the rest of the body pretty decently. And this will only work if you're shooting in that kind of Rembrandt style from upper left to bottom right. Or obviously you could shoot Rembrandt from the, uh, like at a 45 basically, um, and angled down from the right side if you wanted. But the point being that you can actually adjust and kind of rebalance your photo a little bit. It may not be perfect because the way the light falls and how far she is from the background and where shadows hit, um, all that has to be taken into account. And it's gonna be different every time you move the light just a little bit. But you can achieve something very similar to a decently evenly balanced shot. And there's far less work I have to do uh, as far as like skin correcting or color editing, all of that, everything is much closer. Now I think I may have darkened it a little bit too much, but here's the original and here's what we got now. So yeah, it's definitely still brighter down at the bottom. All I would do is hit the selection tool again, select the box that's on our chest there and just re-edit my exposure level. Maybe I'll just bring it up just a little bit more. And by doing this, maybe I can even do it that way. Let's see. That way I'm only affecting the mirror. The face like that. So there you go.